all of this will be gone. We won't be able to live here for 40 years. My house is two and a half, three k's up the road, and I fear for the safety of that house. The Wiedemann and Burns families have been farming this patch of the Wimmera for decades. I'm a third generation farmer. I've been actually on this farm for all of my working life. This is one of the major food bowls, particularly for pulses. We grow lentils, chickpeas, beans, canola, wheat and barley. It's a very, very good area to bring a family up in and continue to farm in. But farming in the region has recently come under threat, with the federal government investing hundreds of millions of dollars in mining projects. As Australia moves towards our net zero targets and ambitions, demand has increased for lithium, zircon, ilmenite and mineral sands, which are vital for construction of wind turbines, EVs and batteries. This area in Western Victoria is rich in these minerals. The Crown absolutely owns what's underneath the soil and that's where the angst lies with government because government is not respecting the fact that farming families have been here and continue to grow food and want to grow food for the next three, four, five hundred years. People are becoming very frustrated, confused, not sure about what the future holds. A recent application to expand mining operations blindsided local farmers. It's frankly bullshit because we didn't find out about it at all until I got a text message one Saturday morning from a local mine-free Wimmera farming group who had actually noticed that there was an application had been put in one of the major papers there'd be at least 150 farming families that would be affected by this particular proposal. But Astron claims it did consult the community, having created a community reference group comprised of 25 members of the local community, including local councils, business representatives, agency and interest group stakeholders. It's a pretty broad response that the company's given you in terms of who the stakeholders are, but I would have thought that farmers would have been one of the first stakeholders that should have been on that committee. Mining licences are not new in the Wimmera, with some having been held for decades. But the recent proposal to commence mining activity in 2025 came as a shock, with many concerned about how it might affect the land. The first unique part about the soil structure here is its ability to open and, and contract, which it makes it self-mulching. The second part is its ability to actually store water, and it's quite unique in its clay structures, which is the part that we're most concerned about with rehabilitation. I don't believe that any mining company can get the soil back to its productive capacity prior to mining. Astron Corporation, the mining company overseeing the project, says it intends to operate at the highest environmental standards and is legally obligated to rehabilitate the land. What we've seen from previous mining operations is that the law is an absolute ass when it comes to rehabilitation. There's no way that any piece of equipment is ever going to be able to rehabilitate and take topsoil off and then be able to place it back over a clay base, which is so variable. This is an old dam site that we filled in about 10 years ago, and you can see by the lack of vigour and crop growth here exactly what's going on. What we're saying here is that it's very, very hard for us to have rehabilitation, and this is living proof. We are robbing Peter to pay Paul because at the end of the day, we're actually trying to produce something from the very productive soils we have here to try and meet that ongoing demand of food. It's not the first time mining companies have come knocking. Peter Byrne recalls their pitch in the mid-90s. They made a big thing of the fact that with so much money we made, we were angry because we were just in the prime of our life and had a dread that we'd have to be sort of, you know, forced off, forced off our land. But it did sort of blow over after two or three years. It's a sacred place, really, because we've brought all our family up here. I was actually born here in the top room, number eight child, so... They didn't feel the need to rush me to hospital. We've always had great neighbours and friends in the area. And a community that's rallying together in a last ditch attempt to stop the proposed mine. So that's Dale's house. Yeah. Within two years, they'll be right through his farm. We've got a clump of bull oak trees just up the paddock there. So they're secure, there's a little five acre area that they'll go around, but surely a house that has a lot of meaning should be sacred enough that they can go around that. It's pretty strategic. They win the town people on side, tell them what they want to hear and leave the farmers last. What they don't want to have is that people start talking about the mine. That's the last thing they want. They come in and be here for 20, 30, 40 years, then, what, then what's left? If all this was to go ahead, I think we'll look back with a lot of embarrassment. Farming families are worried about the futures. They're worried about what all of this means. People have been brought up to be farmers, not miners. Mm. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's terrible that 
our food security is placed so low that farmers, that this process didn't start with farmers and basically end with farmers. Mm. How is that mm. possible for net zero? Mm. I'd be worried about the future as well there because if they're talking about this rehabilitation, in what we it's saw there, possible. it doesn't seem possible. Such an empty it's commitment. Mm. Mind you, we'll always trust mining companies. Mm. Yeah, well, the mining company in question, Astron Corporation's full response <clears throat> to the concerns raised in this story is available on our website if you'd like to check it out.